In this lesson for Bobcad Cam, we're going to take a look at how to build a three-axis gantry style machine for simulation. So here you can see I already have a little rectangle on the screen with some toolpaths so I can open up simulation and show you about the type of machine we're going to create. So I'm just going to open this up real quick, take it just a moment. So you can see in here, this is the type of machine we're going to create inside the software. You can see we'll also assign some of the geometry that we're using here, just a basic style gantry machine. And what we mean by gantry is all of the axes are contained on one moving component. Let's turn off the tool, the tool path and the workpiece. So we have just the machine components. And if I come down here to axis control and right click on one of the tabs, I'm going to set all these to zero. So this is the virtual machine zero. But you can see as I move these, I can move each one of the axes independently. Now, again, by gantry, what that means is you can see if I move the Y, they all move together. The only thing that's stationary is the table or base. Everything else is contained on the overhead gantry and moving along the Y axis or X, however your machine is set up. So we're going to create this type of a machine in the software. Now, a couple other things we need to know is our travels and our zeros for our virtual machine. They don't have to match exactly to the real machine. Your real machine has its own machine zero or machine home, and then you have your fixture zeros and all that stuff. This one we're setting up so the software knows how far it can travel and if it will hit a limit, how far it can travel before it hits it and where at. So you can see again, if I right click on this one and set all to zero, this one will be down here, maybe the theoretical bottom left corner of the machine. This one, let's say we don't use work offsets. We always just re-zero the machine at a specific point. And I, every time I move is only in positive directions from the zero. This is how we want our virtual machine to be created. If the way I run it is, it's set at the center of the table, this is where I would want my machine to be zeroed. And you can see here that the travels will be defined in this case in 10 inches in the X as positive five minus five. So that way it can travel five inches positive in X and five inches negative in X. So it's very important we determine where we want our virtual machine zero to be. And then when you go create your STL files, if you're going to use geometry, the zero or grid location zero that you position those two or reference those two in your drawings, your STL files, need to match that. In this case, they were all matched down here at this point, so that's our virtual machine zero. Everything's a positive, positive move. If I wanted it here for my virtual machine zero, everything has to be created that way and referenced in the STLs. So let's go ahead and close this down, and let's start building one of these machines. We can leave this geometry up, or you can do it with a blank window. We're going to right-click on the milling tools. We're going to come down to default. Now, default is for your overall system settings. Part is just setting the settings for one, that one part you have open. But to create a machine, you have to go into default and current settings. We're going to go to the machine parameters option, and here's where we're going to start to create our machine. You can see if you hit the down arrow, you'll see all the standard machine types, and you can see the one gantry router that I have created that we just showed you here. We're going to recreate that same one, but we're going to call it a little bit something different so we can tell the difference in them. We're going to hit Add. We're going to add a whole new machine to this. So for this one, we're going to call this gantry underscore router underscore new. And you don't want to have spaces in the name, so that's why I'm using the underscores. If you have spaces in the name, it won't recognize it. So you need to either use an underscore or just run it out as one long word. So this way we can see it different. Now, if I use the standard three-axis template, it's going to make a three-axis vertical type milling machine, which we don't want to do. So what we want to do is we want to use the user defined. That's going to give us a clean slate so we can go through and define what axes are tied to which ones to create our gantry style machine or any custom machine you're using. Any three-axis machine will follow the same basic principle. Just the axes will be tied to different ones when you create it. So when I press OK, now what that's going to do is give us our machine. So when I go to machine definition, you can see I have a clean slate here. So now we're going to start creating the axes and the overall configuration of the machine. So we're starting with our main router here. This is our base, our table, our whatever we want to call our column. We want to right click and we want to add a translation axis in this case. So the first one, the main axis that moves that all the other one rides on top of on this machine will be the Y. The next one that rides on top of the Y under translation axis will be the X. And then on top of the X will be the Z to comprise our gantry style machine. 
Now on top of the Z, we do want to do a dynamic element of our tool set because our tool set and flute and shaft and all that are tied to the Z-axis spindle. And then back up on the main machine table, the only thing that's going to be sitting on the table when we do it is under dynamic element is your workpiece and your stock and all that stuff. So you can see that one's tied back to the table. Also off of the table, I'm going to add in a collision check between the tool and the workpiece. So that way I can come in here, I can define other things if I want to, pieces of geometry once I have them set up in here, and I can check for collisions between machine components, stock and machine tool and components and so forth. But I at least want the basic collision checking between the workpiece and the tool. And we want to tie that back to the overall machine. So this machine is set. Now we want to start setting our travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Y, and you can see it brings up our group in here. You can see there's our machine name, we want that to just be Y. The direction, you can see we're controlling the Y axis. Now the way this works is if the head itself is what's moving, or the spindle itself is what's moving on the Y, then you want a positive one. If the spindle itself is stationary and the Y axis is moving underneath it, you want it to be a minus one. So our spindle will be traveling along the Y, so we'll make it a positive number. Then we have our minimum and maximum limits. So this one we're going to say is like off in the corner here, like if this was our table. We're going to say our virtual machine is in the corner and we only move in positive directions from that like we saw in the simulation there. So my minimum is going to be zero and my maximum is going to be 20 inches in the Y. Your initial value needs to be any number between those. In this case we'll just leave zero. We'll come down to the X. You can see our X, our spindle does travel along the X so it's a positive not a negative. And we're going to set our limits here. Again we're going to use minimum of zero and a maximum of 10. So we have a 10 by 20 XY travel. And our initial value again is between them. The Z, the Z is actually traveling on that as well, so that's a positive one. Minimum is gonna be zero. So with the head all the way down to the table, and that's what you wanna do, you wanna think of the face of the spindle as down touching the table as well for the Z. So that's gonna be zero. We can't go any negative into the table. And our total travel up in Z is gonna be seven inches. So we can lift up seven inches in the Z and zero is between those as well. So basically we could choose that machine and simulate just like that. We don't have to add in any geometry. So if I OK this, go back to milling tools in part because now we want to set that machine to the part file that we want to use. You could see I can choose that machine. Now before I go any further with that and we actually take a look at it, I'm going to go back into Milling Tools, Default, Current Settings, and right below the Machine Parameters and Definition, we want to go at least to Posting. Posting in here allow you to choose what post processor is being called for that machine when you choose it. Now, this is nice if you have several machines you're setting up and you just want to quickly choose the other machine and have it set all the background settings. This one we'll say has a, maybe just a Mach 3, no ATC, no tool changer on it. And we'll open that, and that's set in there for us. Maybe also our file extension for this machine is a TXT, and all your other defaults here as you need. Multi-axis posting, you really don't need to go in here unless you're setting up a multi-axis like four or five axis machine. Three axis, just worry about the top three of them. All right, so we've got our machine chosen. We've got a little piece of geometry and toolpath on here. If I go into mill simulation now, we should still be able to simulate our part. Okay, it's still picking up the other machine. Let's go back in there and make sure. Milling machine, part, current settings. Yeah, I didn't pick the new one. So we're going to go down to new and OK that. Now we go into mill simulation. We should still be able to simulate it, like I said, with those travels and those checks and everything that we've put in. And But you can see my part and everything here. So if I just hit play, you can see where it's cutting. Now my stock here is in the wrong spot. Let me go back and just recreate that. I did move it. Recompute. Now it should be in the correct spot. So you can see it's sitting over the zero, and as it cuts through there, you can see I can cut my part. I can get a simulation and everything. This spot right here is representing our machine virtual zero. So if I came over here onto the axis control and right clicked on any one of these and said set all to zero, see how it brings it over and down to the face of the spindle is at zero. 
So what this is telling me is my x can move 10 inches positive. No negative. The y can move 20 inches positive, no negative, and my z can move up 7, no negative. So again, you can see those are the limits that we've set. If this part was drawn, let me close out of here, with the center of this at the grid 0, well, you're going to have some of this that's on the negative side of our axis, and you're going to get an axis travel limit error. Let's just move that over real quick and show you what we mean. And we'll just position it somewhere right about there. I'm now going to reselect my geometry. Nothing's changed, so I can just OK it in the shape of it and recompute it. I'm going to move my stock wizard back over. We want to reline our stock. And now we'll simulate again. Right there, as soon as I go to run it, you can see it's telling me I've exceeded my travel limits. So I've gone too far in the X minus and the Y minus from what the machine will allow. It says minimum is zero. So if there's any number more than zero in the minus, it's going to error it and say, sorry, you can't move here. So let's do this. Let's go back in here to our current settings. Oh, wrong one. Milling tools, default, current settings. We're going to have our new machine there and machine definition. And let's change these to where I can go minus 10 to positive 10, like if our zero was at the center of the table. Same thing with the X. We'll do minus 5 to positive 5. And we'll just OK that. So now if I go into simulation, it allows me to run it because it sees it can travel 5 inches this way, 5 inches this way, and so forth from the center of our table. So now I can run that and see I can cut out my part. So again, this is just setting up a virtual machine. You want the travels to match your actual machine. You want your limits and everything to be right, but you want to know where you're going to be locating the zero of the part. If you're always going to work in that bottom corner on these type of machines like a router or so forth, then you can build your virtual machine there. If you're assigning geometry to it, they have the STL files have to match orientation wise. If you're going to be randomly placing it around the table at different locations, the zero on the part a lot of times, I would recommend using the center of the table as your virtual machine zero. You can still have your work offset wherever you want on the table. That's something totally different. Your machine setup and all that's different as well. So I do recommend building it off the center of the table if you're going to do it that way. For this example with STL files and everything we already have created, we're going to go back in here. And what I'm going to do is put them back to the 0 and 20, just so our STL files match. I'll show you how to assign those. And 0 and 10. So again, we're building a virtual machine. It's not going to absolutely match how our machine home is, or actual machine home. And if you're using work offset, your part 0 is your part 0. This is just setting how far the virtual machine can travel in its limits. So we've set those up. Now what we're going to do is come back and add some geometry to this. Now I'm going to OK out of this for the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my C drive at my computer, my local drive, the Bobcat Cam data folder, the version of the software, and the mock sim folder. Now inside of here you can see the new machine we created. If I open it up, there's just the XML file which contains our travels and so forth. This is where you'll store your STL files that you're going to use for your machine geometry. I'm going to actually back up and pull those out of here. So you can see here's my different STL files that we've already created. I'm just going to copy those and paste them in here like this was where we were putting them for the first time. So now this allows me when I go to assign geometry, this is where it looks for those files. So you want to have them inside that folder. Again, it's on the C drive, Bobcat Cam Data, the version of the software, and the Mock Sim or Machine Simulation folder. And then whichever machine you're using. So now when we go into milling tools, default, current settings, and let's start with the base of the machine. We'll right click on here and we're going to come down to add geometry. You can see we're going to direct it to that folder. And it lists my file so I can choose the base. Open it up. Now that geometry is set there. So when I click on it, you can see in here I can give it a name, base, I can give it a color. Maybe I want to pick a different color for it, like this one here. 
transparency, reflectivity numbers, and which STL file it's calling. We'll come down to the Y. We'll right click on it, add a geometry. We'll pick the Y axis or whatever you have your STL files defined as that. And you can see it loads it in. Now you can have multiple geometries for each piece. You can have a base, you can have a fixture plate base mount as well. It sits on top of it. As long as those STL files are positioned correctly in CAD and they're stored as separate files, you can call in as many as you want to get more detail into it. This one we're just going to call Y axis. Again, no spaces in the name. You can use underscores. We'll change the color of the Y axis inside of here. Maybe we'll make this one like this color. And we'll come down to the X and add geometry. X axis. Pick a color for it. Uh, maybe we'll go a little bit different here so we can just see it move a little bit differently. And then we'll do the Z. Oop, I'm doing the wrong one here. Let me go down to my Z geometry. Call it Z axis. Pick a different color for it. Here we'll make it a little darker. And OK. So now that we've set all that geometry, again, when we go into our simulation, our part should err because it's back at zero, which it does. It's telling me it's trying to travel in the X and Y minus, and my minimums are set to zero. Remember, we changed those back to zero. So we're just going to move that again real quick. I'm just going to move it into my table travel. Just drag it for now. So this would be like the zero position of my table, so anywhere up inside of here will work. I'm going to reassociate the stock to that new piece, and I'm going to reassociate my geometry to that new position. Recalculate my feature. Now go into my simulation again. So now we should have our machine actually start showing the components, and you can see the different colors that we've created them there. Again, you can have as many STL files positioned, just, just make sure they're positioned correctly in the CAD to line up to each other inside of here. So if I came in here and switched over to workpiece, you see it just shows the workpiece and the uh, tool, meaning the workpiece is going to be stationary to tool moves. Tool focus means the tool is stationary and the workpiece moves, and machine focus means it's going to show my machining components. So now if I was to just hit play on that, you can see it's going to cut my part, which I need to move up onto the table. Because in this case, let me close out of this, the top of the part is zero. So remember, zero on our virtual machine is with the face of the spindle down against the table. Well, if you want to move your part around on the table so you can see it a little better, if you go into your machine setup and right-click and edit it and use your work, work offset, this is just a workpiece movement or shift around on the table for simulation. I'm just going to move it up my thickness of my part. And then go back into the simulation. So here you can see the final machine we built with the part on the table. So if I come over here and just run play, you can see it's just going to show how the machine moves. Again, I can right click on any of these, set all to zero, and now you can see how I can move those manually across there as well to achieve my different travels. You can see our different colors and everything we set for the different components as well. And if you want to get in and set the tools, you can do that inside that machine definition. This concludes this video.